Hello, I'm Joseph Pearson. And I'm Yana Gunther. Today we're going to ex be exploring position, velocity, and acceleration. Using integrals. As well as the free fall model to find the speed at which objects fall as well as their position using their acceleration. Necessary prior knowledge that you will need for today's lesson is the particles moving across a long line, which is an S of T function, rectilinear motion, how a particle move, can move back and forth on the line, position function, which you can see the position versus time curve here, shows the shade, the unshaded area is the area of go, uh, the particles going to the right, and as it crosses the x-axis here, it goes into the negative y value area, it, it changes directions, and it is currently on the left side of the origin. You will also need basic understanding of derivatives as well as integrals. If you have phenomenal pre-calculus preparation like my partner Yana and I, you already know that the derivative of the position is equal to velocity, and the derivative of velocity is actually equal to acceleration. Now from an integral point of view, we can look at it and see that the integral of acceleration is equal to the velocity function, and that the integral of the velocity function is actually equal to position. This way, you can actually find both velocity and position of a particle just by having the acceleration and a little bit of other prior knowledge. Our example problem for today starts as, suppose that an intergalactic spacecraft uses a sail in the solar wind to produce a constant acceleration of 0.032 meters per second squared. Assuming that the spacecraft has a velocity of 10,000 meters per second when the sail is first raised, how far will the spacecraft travel in one hour, and what will its velocity be at that time? So our problem gave us two initial conditions. First, that acceleration is at a constant rate of 0 0.032 meters per second squared, and also that the initial velocity of the spacecraft when it first starts is 10,000 meters per second. So what we need to do is get the integral of this function, 0, 3, 2, dt, because that will be equal to our velocity. And that's going to be 0 0.032t plus c. And we know that at v of 0 is equal to 10,000. And so at t equals 0, 10,000 equals is equal to c. So we know that our v of t function is equal to 0 0.032t plus 10,000. So now we need to get the integral of this function to find the position. We take integral of 0.032t plus 10,000 dt. That is going to be equal to our position function, which is s of t equals 0 0.016 t squared plus 10,000 t plus c. So that is our position function. And we know that at the initial, at s of 0, it is equal to 0. So we know that our plus c is equal to 0 as well. So they were wondering, what is the, what, what is the position at 1 hour? And we get, we get our functions in seconds, so we need to convert 
our seconds into, or I mean an hour into seconds. We know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, as well as that there are 60 seconds in each minute. So we do a simple 60 squared, and we get 3600. So now what we're going to do is plug 3600 into our function here and figure out what the spacecraft's position is at that time. Just take the function and plug it in. Second calc value 3600. So now we plug in our 3600 into the position function. And we end up getting 36,207,360 miles away. And now, for the second part of the question, they wanted the velocity at the time that they had given at one hour. So we have our 3,600 seconds again. So V of 3,600 equals 0 0.032 times 3,600 plus 10,000 equals 10,115 meters miles per second. So on to uniformly accelerated motion. When a particle is moving with a constant acceleration, the acceleration function looks like A of T equals a constant, and we'll use A as our constant. So because we can integrate this to find velocity and position functions, every velocity and position position function that we generate based on a um, particle moving with a constant acceleration is going to follow the same form with initial velocity um, at t equals zero the v of t function is going to follow the form v sub zero plus a, our constant, times t, time. And then with s sub zero at t equals zero, the position function s of t is going to equal s sub zero plus b sub zero times t plus, get over here, one half a, our constant, times t squared. And those are always going to be in the same form. Hold on a second. One common misconception that has been made way too often lately is that speed and velocity are the exact same thing. However, speed is the uh, how fast an object is moving, and velocity is actually the rate at which an object move, like changes position. And so, put it in layman's terms, or rancho terms, velocity, sign. Speed, no sign. So for this next part, I'm going to teach you how to figure out if an object is speeding up or slowing down. Now you might think, well, if it's accelerating, isn't it speeding up? Well, no. It just means that there is a tending force on the object that's pushing it forward. So let's look at velocity and acceleration and we look at to see if the signs are the same or different to figure out if an object is actually speeding up or slowing down. So if we want to know if a particle is speeding up or slowing down at, for example, t equals 4, we evaluate the velocity and the acceleration functions for t equals 4. 
Now, if both signs are the same, for example, if they're both positive, then this means that the particle is speeding up because it's moving forward and the acceleration, the tending force, is also moving forward, in a sense pushing it forward as it moves forward, so it's speeding up. So in the same situation, if we are evaluating V of T and A of T for T equals 4, and one of them is positive and the other one is negative, then the particle is slowing down because it's moving forward, but the tending force is going backwards. It's pushing it backwards as it's moving forwards, so the particle is slowing down. So on to displacement. Displacement is the net change in position of a particle. For example, if a particle moves five feet to the right and then three feet back, in the end, its displacement is two feet from where it first started. So to find this displacement with the integral, we use the formula, the integral from t initial to t sub 1, or the beginning of our time interval to the end of our time interval, of v of t dt equals, using the um, fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the um, integral of v of t is s of t, so we get s of t sub 1 minus s of t sub 0, and that is the formula. Things like displacement come up in all parts of our lives. Even things like as silly as the cha-cha. I mean, just the step to the left, step back, you turn, step another left, another back, and you actually stepped two steps back, so your displacement is two back, and you actually went left then right. So your displacement to the left and right is zero. Let's apply this to a problem. Um, we want to find the displacement of a particle from t equals 0 to t equals 3, and the velocity of the particle is described by t squared minus 2t meters per second. So first we'll integrate, integrate v of t and get x of t equals 1 third t cubed minus t squared. So now, we will evaluate S of 3 minus S of 0 to find the displacement of the particle. And when we do this, we find that this equals 0. So while our particle has moved from T of 0 to T of 3, its displacement is 0. It ends right back where it started. Now, in regards to total distance traveled. The total distance traveled is the amount of total traveling that the particle has done without regard to its direction. For example, if I walk two steps to the right and three steps back to the left, my total distance traveled is five steps, whereas my displacement would have been one step. So the formula to calculate this is the integral from t initial to t sub 1 of the absolute value of v of t dt. We need the absolute value because we're not concerned with direction, we're only concerned with the number of units traveled. So using the same problem that we use for displacement, we're going to try to find um, the total distance traveled from 0 to 3 of the particle. But this time, we're going to use our calculator to make it easier. So in our calculator, we're going to set up the integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of v of t, which is t squared minus 2t, absolute value, dt, and we're going to solve for that to find our answer. So to get this on our calculator, we'll go to math 9 to get the integral from 0 to 3 
the absolute value will go to math, 1 over to number, and then 1, absolute value. And then we'll put in our problem, which is x squared, x instead of t, minus 2t, or 2x, dx, and we'll enter. And we get 2.6667 as the total distance traveled of the particle from time equals 0 to 3. That 666 is for you, Tori. So here is a woman ice skating. Let's observe her change in velocity, and then we'll look at it in the form of a graph. So this is a graph representing the velocity of the woman ice skating in the animation. So as you can see, she starts out in the negative part of the y-axis because she's moving to the left. And then she jumps up to the right and she's moving faster, so she's higher up. And then for this longer amount of time, she's moving to the left again, so she's down here in the negative part. And she's farther down because she's moving faster. And then she starts moving right again, up here on the positive part of the y-axis. And she's moving slower now than she was the first time that she was moving to the right. And these lines are flat. They don't have any slope or a concavity because her acceleration is constant for um, the whole part. Okay, now we're going we're to apply everything that we've learned so far. Here we have an acceleration graph as well as this corresponding velocity graph. As you can see here on the acceleration graph, it starts out at 2 at t equals 0, comes up to 3 at t equals 1, comes back down to 0 at t equals 2, and at t, uh, t equals 2.5, it comes down to negative 2, and then comes back down, it comes back to the x-axis at t equals 3. Now we can see on velocity function graph, it starts off at negative 2 at t equals 0, comes up to the x-axis at t equals 1, goes up to 5 at t equals 2, and stays at 5 for the rest of the function until it reaches t equals 3. Now let's try and see where the particle is speeding up and slowing down. We're going to look at the separate intervals and figure out whether or not it's speeding for slowing down here. Okay, so you can see right here, from 0, t equals 0 to t equals 1, the particle its acceleration is positive. However, its acceleration or its velocity is negative. Thus, the particle is currently slowing down. If we look at t equals 1 to t equals 2, though, you can see that it's still positive acceleration and the velocity function has crossed the x axis, thus, making both the signs the same, both positive, thus, it's speeding up. Now, if we look from t equals 2 to t equals 3, we see that it is negative on the acceleration side, but still positive on the velocity side. So it's slowing down again. So now we're going to be looking for the displacement of our v of t graph. Displacement is the sign area in between the function and the x-axis. So we currently have negative 2 as our height for this area and a 1 as our base. So we have negative 1 as our area right there. We have this triangle right here, the height of 5 and a base of 1, so it's 2.5. And we have this rectangle, and yes, it is a rectangle, even though my artistic abilities are bad. And that's going to be a value of 5. So now you add all of these together, and you get 6.5 as our displacement. So now we're going to find the total distance traveled, which isn't sine. So we're going to add the values that we have right here all together, even though that is negative 1. It's the absolute value of negative 1. It's 1 plus 2.5 plus 5 equals 8.5 as our total distance traveled. If we look at our position graph right here, and we're given the initial condition that 
s of 2 is equal to 8, meaning that at t equals 2, the position of the particle is going to be 8. And we want to find out where, let's say, what its position is going to be at t equals 3. We simply need to go back to our velocity graph and look at the net sign area underneath uh, the function and the x-axis between 2 and 3. So in this case, it's going to be 5. So we add 5 to a position that we have at two, t equals 2, and we get 13 as a position at t equals 3. Now, if we want to find the position at t equals 1, we simply minus the area underneath the function and the x-axis. So we minus 2.5 from 8, and we get 5.5 at t equals 1. Finally, if we want to see what its initial position is at t equals 0, we look at the area between 1 and 0, and we know it's negative 1, so we add 1 to our position at t equals 1, and we get 6.5. So for further clarification, the reason that we can do this, find the area and just adding it over here, is because the integral of um, v of t is the s of t function. So the integral is the area underneath the graph. So the area underneath the v of t function represents this movement in the position function. You may ask yourself, self? Where does position, velocity, and acceleration lead to? The answer to this question is free fall. Here's our drop zone acceleration data. It shows sitting, then free fall at t equals 60, breaking at t equals 70, and going back to normal at t equals 80. The free fall model describes how an object that begins to rise up from Earth with vertical velocity, then initial uh, upward velocity ceases, and the object is acted upon purely by Earth's own gravity at a constant rate. The magnitude for this constant rate is approximately g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. The acceleration is always negative because an upward moving object with positive velocity is always, moving, uh, is always slowing down, while a downward moving object that has a negative velocity is speeding up. The v of t function for the free fall can be denoted v of t equals v initial minus g t, where g is the gravity, and the position function can be denoted s of t equals s initial plus v initial t minus one half g of t squared. What we learned. Today we learned that the integral of acceleration is equal to velocity, as well as the integral of velocity equal to position. We also learned speed of velocity and their differences. We also learned about uniform acceleration and slowing down, speeding up, displacement, and total distance traveled. As well as learning how to analyze graphs such as V of T graphs, S of T graphs, or A of T graphs, and the very basics of free fall. I'm Joseph Pearson. I'm Yana Gunther. And you're Mr. Ford. <laughs>